Hi, everybody. Welcome to Arundel Statesville School's Ed Talks. Our guest today is Teresa Pullier, who is the coordinator of the AP Academy at West Arundel High School. Teresa, good morning and welcome to you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. You guys are undertaking a very interesting project at your school called the AP Academy. And uh, I've heard really great things uh, from parents, from students, and of course the staff there as well. And it's really growing quickly. It is. Yeah. So congratulations to you. Um, tell us a little bit about the AP Academy. How does it work? How is it structured? And um, what brought this about? Uh, we decided that we needed to meet our community's needs better, that we were offering a more rigorous um, program that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Mr. Palmer said, Ms. Pullier, I know how involved you are with our AP classes and our AIG, so would you take this on? And I said, mm -hmm. sure. Um, what The way it's made up is that um, the students apply in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. We take them in in ninth grade. They can start in tenth, but past that it would be very difficult to meet the requirements. So those are the two years we kind of look at. Um, they're signing up for a rigorous program that will prepare them for college after high school. Um, it also makes them more competitive applicants and for um, college and for scholarships, mm -hmm. which they usually like to hear that as well. Absolutely. Um, so they must take seven AP and or Mitchell classes. We've incorporated Mitchell into mm -hmm. that as well um, by the end of their four years. And at that point, we're also looking at a capstone program, which is done through College Board, mm -hmm. which will offer them another degree on top of that. And uh, mm -hmm. we're now researching that and going to different schools across sure. the state. Um, it's, it's a very um, interesting program for sure. So yeah, it's more about the rigor and preparing them for college, starting them early so that, you know, now the structure is they start AP in 11th grade and they usually don't even know what they're diving into because mm -hmm. um, they don't understand the rigor of it and the expectations of homework and that mm -hmm. type of thing. So um, once we start them out in ninth grade with a teacher who knows she not only has to teach them the course content, but she also needs right. to teach them how to do AP classes. Yes. And that will follow through to 10th grade, too. They have one AP in 10th grade, and that teacher mm -hmm. also is aware that it's not only about teaching content, but how. Mm -hmm. How do you succeed in an AP class? How do you do time management and you know prepare for a test and all that? Um, mm -hmm. So by doing that, once they get into 11th grade and they really push forward with more AP, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. It won't be that shock to their system that it can be now. Um, and in our population, that's a very important piece for them. Absolutely. And as these kids progress through the academy, I would imagine that when they finish the academy and they do go to college, mm -hmm. then there's not that culture shock exactly. of rigor no. when they get to college. That is our hope and our expectation that yes, they'll be well prepared. Yeah. Um, right now we have districts that those students take many, many, many AP classes, mm -hmm. like Wake County and districts like that. So. Our, ch our students usually are behind them because they just haven't had mm -hmm. those opportunities. And the professors teach to those higher ability students. Yes. Um, so our students now should be right up there with them. Yes. Um, and yeah. Well, I commend you for what you're doing Thank there. You. Now, in addition to signing up and taking a rigorous course mm -hmm. of study, you guys have really been very thoughtful mm -hmm. in the support uh, yes. Uh, pieces that you've put in place for your students. So let's yes. talk a little bit about how do you support them and get them ready. And I understand that you might even have a, a, a lounge area that the kids <laughs> congregate in. Tell us a little well, about that. Well, that's one of the, um, I guess, the interesting things about having a counselor do this. You know, you put yeah. those counselor pieces in there. Um, so one of the things, my office is in a lounge lab area, yeah. which I've been told is very homey. Uh -huh. um, the students <laughs> love it. They come in, and when they come in, they actually do work. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe it is because it's so homey that they feel comfortable just to sit down. Um, they can sit down at tables. We have couches in there. Mm -hmm. And then we have longer, more um, individual work type tables as sure. well. Um, they come there for lunch. Almost all of them come during lunch, so it gets pretty crowded. But it's good to know that they feel comfortable there. Um, they also know I'm right there as well. So mm -hmm. if they need to talk about something, if there's a problem, it's addressed pretty quickly. Sure. Um, 
We also, like I said, the teachers know that they're to prepare them for AP as well as the content. So that's mm -hmm. one support piece. But I also have them in the same home room together. So that way, as the counselor, mm -hmm. um, I have mentors for ninth grade. I have mentors working on like time management, stress management, um, that type of stuff and you mm -hmm. know, team building with them. And then I pull out as well for things like test anxiety and do support groups that way as well. Right. So it gives them all those parts and pieces they don't normally have. Plus, parents know, and they come to me often because of this, they have someone who's watching out for their children at all times because I have that ability as a counselor mm -hmm. to really oversee what's going on and know if there's a you know a problem that they're not talking about. If they're in the hall right. upset talking to their friends, I'm aware of that. Whereas, you know, normally no, you know, a staff member wouldn't. Yes. Like, you know, not one. Staff That's member right. For all of them. That's exactly right. So, well, the numbers tell a very uh, encouraging story about this. So I think you started with 18 students in the academy. And what's happened since that well, inception? Well, for that class of 18, I've had um, 10 more um, join us. So for next year, that class of 18 will now be 28 going into 10th That's grade. That's phenomenal. World. I know. And we've had, we had over 50 um people interested in our program from eighth grade to ninth grade wow. and out of that we're sending out 35 letters of acceptance very soon oh that's wonderful so, wow yeah. phenomenal growth wow, yeah. now i know you're you're planning long term for some really exciting opportunities field trip experiences mm -hmm. uh lecture guest lecture yes. series things of that nature what are some of your things that are on the horizon for the future well one of the things we're looking forward to are the college trips not just the normal college trips that fortunately our grant money has enabled us to do but there's more competitive schools and quite possibly further away um, we're mm -hmm. also looking for field trip opportunities with their classes um, i tried to talk um, the principal into doing a disney world trip that did not go over <laughs> <Yeah>. very well <laughs> the kids and the parents love the idea yeah. <laughs> but um yeah i'm always looking out for those opportunities mm -hmm. of interesting things that will it really enhance what they're doing. They're trying now to talk me into a longer distance college trip, sure. which I could see in the horizon for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, why not take you know a week or a weekend and do a few different colleges up north, or yeah. well, they want to go out west too. That's mm. that'd be a little more complicated. Yeah. But, um, we yeah we have all that going on. Like I said, we're looking into that capstone program. Yeah. Which um, speakers with that they have recommended they bring college professors in mm -hmm. um, to really talk to them about how to do research. Plus, um, people from the community. We just were at Western Guilford High School. Um, in Greensboro, and they have Ron Howard come in and talk oh, to their wow. students. And so, yeah, we're Very really looking impressive. into that kind of stuff now. Like people, yeah, from who are willing to come to us from the, yeah. the you know, from the state, even further out, that, mm -hmm. and talk to our students about yeah, you know, the future and you know how to best succeed and, and sure. That. Yeah, it's limitless what you can it, do. With it that. is, and that's how my brain works. Unfortunately yeah. for everybody, or fortunately. Well, I would say they have the right person running the academy because <laughs> you. you're a visionary type person, and that's what it takes. Well, we're very proud of what you've accomplished there, and really uh, thank you for thinking outside the box and just creating a, a new opportunity for the kids in the West community. Thank you. You should be very proud of what you're doing out there. I am. I'm very happy so far with the way things are going. You know, um, yeah, it it makes my day to be able to come in and see those students. Like they meet me in the morning. They come yes. into my room and say good morning to me, and it's just yep. it makes you feel like you're doing doing something important. You know, to help change their lives and make it better. Well, you really are doing something very important for these kids, and and the uh, the real fruit of your labor will not be seen until they arrive on that college course yes. with with credits under their belt right. and with the confidence that they can do yes. college work and be competitive. Yes. Yeah. So I commend you for what thank you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching and we appreciate your time. Uh, this is just one more example of the great innovations taking place in the Iredell State School Schools. Thank you again.